Hello, and welcome to part five of the inflammation series from scholarlynurse.com. In this video, I will be going over nursing interventions in relation to the inflammatory process. If you learned something new or come across something you like or found helpful, please like and subscribe. The learning objectives in this video are to identify nursing interventions for inflammation management, list interventions corresponding with the acronym RICE, correlate drug therapy types with management of clinical manifestations. You want to monitor your patient's vital signs on a regular basis. Watch for increased temperature, respirations, and heart rate, as these can be indicative of infection. Promote adequate nutrition and hydration as metabolism increases during inflammation. Fluid loss can also occur if the patient begins sweating due to a fever. You will want to monitor labs such as CRP, ESR, and CBC and report abnormalities to the provider. Plasma protein synthesis increases during inflammation, which results in increased C-reactive protein, abbreviated CRP, and erythrocyte sedimentation rate, abbreviated ESR. Monitor the CBC for increased white blood cell counts. There are three types of drug groups that are typically implemented to manage inflammation depending on the circumstances of each patient and provider orders. Antipyretic drugs are used to manage fever and include acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, salicylates, such as aspirin, and NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen and naproxen sodium. All of these inhibit synthesis of prostaglandins, which prevents them from affecting the temperature regulation center in the hypothalamus. NSAIDs and salicylates also fall into the anti-inflammatory group. Corticosteroids, such as prednisone, work by inducing immunosuppressive effects. Antihistamines, such as diphenhydramine, also known as Benadryl, and loratadine, work by blocking histamine. They are very useful in the treatment of allergy conditions. A popular acronym reference for managing inflammation is RICE. Encourage your patients to rest and immobilize the injured area as much as possible. This can help speed the healing process. Ice pack application will help to release swelling and pain. Heat therapy can also be used, but it's not recommended until one to two days after injury. Compression is useful for reducing edema and for stopping bleeding at the time of initial injury. You will want to assess distal pulses and capillary refill before and after application of compression. Also monitor if patient reports loss of feeling in the compressed area. Elevation. Encourage patients to elevate an injured extremity above heart level as this reduces pain and edema. Compression and elevation might be contraindicated for patients with compromised circulation though. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this presentation, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or requests, please comment below. Have a great rest of your day and I hope you enjoyed the series.